Okay, my friends, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make one of the most beneficial natural fertilizers utilizing free ingredients, okay? So first I'm gonna explain a little bit and then we'll go outside and I'll show you exactly how to make this and what ratios and dilutions you need to be using, okay? So the resource here is somewhat misunderstood. So I'm gonna clear up some things. Now this resource I'm talking about is wood ashes. Now, Mother Nature has created this system that is perfection, where when a brush fire or something burns to the ground, the earth becomes very fertile afterwards. That's because the plants go into the ground and the roots mine minerals and everything that it needs and it stores it in the plant tissue. Then when the burning process happens, the minerals don't, uh, they're not affected by heat. So the minerals remain in the ashes and it becomes a very concentrated source of exactly what the plants need. So wood ashes are full of potassium. Uh, they used to call it potash, potash, pot ash, ashes from a pot. That's what our ancestors used to call it, pot ash. They didn't know exactly that it was filled with potassium and mineral, uh, uh, magnesium and calcium, large amounts of calcium. They didn't really understand that quantitative thing, but they understood that things grow really well after there's a fire in the area. Okay, so we're going to utilize this ancient wisdom of, of our ancestors and of nature, and uh, I'll show you how to make it. Okay, first thing you wanna do is acquire some fresh wood ash. Now, the very important thing is that the ash has not been exposed to rain, okay? because all of the ingredients, the minerals, are very water soluble, meaning that they are easily washed away by the rain. This is one reason it's such a good fertilizer, but it's also the reason that you can't think that you're gonna go out to your old burn pile and get some of the old ash, okay, that's been rained on, because most of the minerals will be leached out. So it's very important that you use uh, virgin wood ashes that have not been exposed to the elements. The best kind of ashes for this fertilizer come from a mixture of different kinds of woods, mostly hardwoods, some softwoods, and smaller diameter twigs, like the size of your finger and smaller. If you can get ash from those, that's ideal. But any ash will work, even if it's pallets, or as long as it's not been treated with chemicals, the ash will work. So gather whatever kind of ash you can find, just so long as it is just wood ash. There can be no plastic or no paint or no none of that kind of stuff, okay? This has to be fresh and clean and natural. Once you've acquired the appropriate kind of ash, then we are going to mix a solution of one part of ashes to five parts of water. So we're using a five gallon bucket, so we are making, we are using one full gallon of uh, wood ashes. Once you have a gallon of ash mixed into your five gallon bucket, then you want to fill the remainder of the way with water, preferably rain water that you have captured yourself, but tap water or well water, it will all work. So fill it the rest of the way and then stir it really well. This is important. You must make sure that it's all dissolved. So stir well. Make sure you get to the bottom and you get all the residuals on the sides of the bucket. Once it is all mixed in really well, then you take one cup per gallon of this solution and dilute it with water. So this is a two and a half gallon watering can. We are gonna take uh, two and a half, maybe three. It's not an exact science, uh, but roughly one cup per gallon is what you will use. Again, try to use rainwater whenever possible. So we're gonna fill up our jug the rest of the way and we are going to take it and water the plants. Now, plants that will love this concoction are anything in the allium family. So your uh, garlic chives like you see here, or the green onions, or the king green onion, or your garlic, or even um, also tomatoes. Tomatoes love this. Now, contrary to popular belief, now listen closely, because this is the misconception, Contrary to popular belief, this does not actually change the pH of the soil. Not very much. You would have to use a boatload of this to actually change the pH of the soil. Okay, so contrary to popular understanding, 
the plant root itself is actually what controls the pH of the soil in the rhizosphere, the area that is around directly touching the root. The plant regulates the pH of that by a combination of releasing different kinds of sugars and uh, uh, interactions with bacteria, certain bacteria. So you don't really have to worry, unless you're using a boatload of this, m way more than we've made, way more than we would use, uh, you're not going to be changing the pH of your soil with this, okay? So feel free to use it once a week at the dilutions, uh, one cup per gallon after the solution is made, and your plants are going to love it, okay? Make this part of the natural fertilizer regimen where you're using the JDOM JLF once a week, you're using this once a week, you're using the uh, uh, fish fertilizer once a week. All of these things in combination are going to give you really nutrient-dense, healthy produce, my friends. Okay, my friends, so now you pretty much know the secret. Uh, you can use this definitely on anything in the allium family, like I said. Also, any of the leafy greens, your collards, your Swiss chard, the, the uh, broccoli, kales, cabbages, spinach, all that stuff is going to love this. Uh, tomatoes are going to like this. I've used it on all that kind of stuff before. Now, the only thing that I have heard doesn't like this is potatoes because it changes the alkalinity of the soil. But I don't necessarily believe that. So I am doing a hardcore experiment in uh, two of the potato bags. I am using this consistently on the potatoes. So we're going to know for sure by the end of this year uh, whether or not that's true because I think you can use it on everything. So, okay, give the video a thumbs up please and share it with anyone that needs this knowledge, my friends.